there was a really great article that I stumbled across in the Hollywood Reporter that basically talked about movie tracking and the tracking. Now, tracking is basically, if you boil it down, it's what the industry is predicting a certain film will do at the box office, how well it's going to do opening weekend, all that kind of stuff. Now, there's been a long-standing formula, tried and true, that for the very most part has been quite reliable and pretty accurate. Obviously, not always 100%. Any man-made thing is not. But the article in The Hollywood Reporter was basically pointing out that this summer, this year, tracking has been ridiculously off from like 20% off for movies like um, Terminator Genesis, which was way lower, for movies like Straight Outta Compton that's ended up being much higher, to like the big granddaddy, which was Jurassic World. Right. Tracking for Jurassic World had it at like 125 million opening weekend, which is insanely good numbers on its own, but it ended up making over 200 million. Where was tracking and all that kind of stuff? Plus, it pointed out a lot of big films that came out that were tracking at certain numbers and then came out really low. Now, the, the, the crux of this article, though, was pointing out that a lot of the studio heads are now acknowledging Rotten Tomatoes and instant fan social media reaction is what is killing a lot of these movies that they're putting out that they thought, look, we had this formula. You make trailers a certain way. You put certain people in it. You put certain music in the trailers. You do this type of advertising. And then the tracking says you can expect to make this much this particular weekend. What this article is saying now is that that trend is becoming unreliable. No longer can you just formulate, put together, take this formula about how to market this movie, and then you can count on this amount of money being made opening weekend. Now it's introducing new you know, paradigms that are outside of the studio's control. Mm -hmm. Rotten Tomatoes, which is, of course, a, a conglomeration of all the critic ratings from around the web, online, print, whatever, and the social media stuff, to the point now that the article actually pointed out that for the first time ever, two films this summer actually used Rotten Tomatoes scores in their marketing. Mm -hmm. That That's the type of day and era that we are living in now. So, Mark, you had a chance to look at this article. What did you take away from it when you, were, when you read it through? I think not every formula is Coca-Cola and that occasionally you do have to update it with new technology like Rotten Tomatoes or, you know, the term word of mouth gets thrown around and it's kind of a catch-all for social media, but word of mouth used to just be something you didn't have to incorporate because word of mouth was me leaving a theater and calling my friends John Schnepp and John Campion saying, you guys got to see this movie. Now, word of mouth is also social media where you have access to literally everyone on on the planet, whether it's a Twitter account or a Facebook account or an Instagram account, I take that me tweeting my emoji for a lot of movies can start to factor in and everybody else starts to do just, this is what my face looks like after a movie. You can express how you felt about a movie so many different ways and people care about what fans think. They're not just worried about what critics think. If they are, that's why they go to Rotten Tomatoes now. So it's definitely a changing of the guard. It's something that I don't think you need to, it's not necessarily broken, but it is something that, need to be, that needs to be tweaked when you're talking about how you track a movie. It's still exciting to see a movie like Jurassic World beat box office predictions. So it doesn't have to be an exact science for me. I like to see what a movie's tracking at. Then I like to see that there is a social media component that can either elevate it or hurt it. You know, what stands out to me about the story is that I often will get in debates with uh, like friends of mine or people who tweet me randomly and say, you know... You shouldn't listen to what other people are saying. You shouldn't listen to critics. You should just watch the trailers and decide for yourself. And that mentality has always driven me kind of nuts because what that is saying basically is you're telling me that the only influence you should allow over your decision-making process is the corporate masters, the people who put these trailers together. Theirs is the only voice you should listen to. That to me is, personally, that to me is flawed thinking. To me, you should be going out and seeing what, you know, this huge array of film critics are saying corporately and together. You should go out and listen to the people, friends of yours that you've, or people you trust on Twitter or social media who see it and listen to their points of view. Don't just listen to the people who stand to make money off you going to see the movie. That's not the way to do it. That should be one of your considerations, right. absolutely. There should be a balance. What I was telling the guys pre-show here, is that what I love about this new trend that under, the studios are realizing now people look at Rotten Tomato scores, people look at their Twitter feeds and seeing what other people are saying and making some decisions based on that. What that tells me and what excites me is it says this, movie studios, you wanna know what a great marketing campaign for your film is? Make a good movie. 
That is the best marketing campaign you can do. Make a great movie. Worry less about how can we spin this actor and promote this and create trailers and a marketing campaign loose that will equal this box office number. Those numbers are becoming more and more, those formulas are becoming more and more obsolete, which is a good thing. And becoming more about did you make a great movie? We're not there yet. There are lots of great movies that nobody gets out to see at this point. But I think if studios can now start to tune in, like what they do, start using those Rotten Tomato scores, start pumping up the fact that people are talking on Twitter about it. If studios can tune in to positive word of mouth and positive reviews, not just putting up some, look, any movie can find one film critic who liked it. Like because all film is subjective. So you're going to find at least one or two and put up their quotes on their movie posters. Those are becoming less relevant now because the audience is cluing into the fact that that doesn't mean anything anymore. Show me a Rotten Tomatoes score. Show me what a suit-wearing, you know, kind of uppity uh, James Rocky would write and what a sometimes mohawk-sporting, grungy kind of Jimmy O would write right. with sometimes some clueless guy like Christian Harloff <laughs> might write or some idiot like me, what I'm writing. Show me what all these various types of people who from different walks of life known as film critics are saying collectively, and they collectively say this is an 87, or they collectively say like like 90% of them give this movie a positive review, that when you follow your Twitter feed and stuff like that, this could be the dawn of a glorious new day. And hopefully now studios will put less attention to that. The, what's the formula for marketing this film to make 50 million compared to how can we just make this the best damn movie we can because that is going to be our best marketing pitch. Anyway, Schnepp, you read the article. What did you think? I love the article. It was great. And it's also, it just, it really spoke to me because uh, critics and people who make movies, 89% Rotten Tomatoes. What's up? Oh, uh, for yeah. my film, The Death of Superman Lives, what happened? I, I was the other 11%. Hey, I, John I really, <laughs> really didn't like it for some reason. But, uh, no, I mean, and I actually followed all those different critics and, and read their reviews, uh, some negative, mostly positive. So it was a really good way for me to be able to track it and see how, and also read the fan reviews. So, I mean, it's really helpful for the filmmakers as well, but it's also, it's it puts your, it puts if you're a filmmaker or a studio, it puts you on the pulse of what people are saying immediately. So as opposed to like what tracking numbers or what you would call bean counting, it's like some of that doesn't really relate to anything because it's like weird algorithms as opposed to actual people seeing the film and talking about it. And those people like, when I was a lot younger, I would read all of Roger Ebert's reviews. And, and a lot of times I would completely disagree with him, but why I would re read a lot of different critics' reviews is so I could get an insight into the film. It didn't affect me as to how I felt about the film, but being a film junkie, I would like, I wanted to know other people's opinions, either positive or negative. And I've, I've loved movies that other people have hated, and I've hated movies that other people have loved, but I've read their reviews and, oh, I see why they liked or hated that, or, oh, I agree with them about this, but because of this other thing that overrides it for me personally. So. I think Rotten Tomatoes, <clears throat> excuse me, is really, really important, as well as all these other critics who are now part of our online world. Even us, we're like a, a small part of it, but you know, we're, we're we see movies all the time. You guys, Schmoes knows, give reviews about films immediately, like sometimes about a week or so before the movie comes out, and your fans get a chance to be like, "Oh, I like what Ellis said about that because they follow your vibe," or like they're my, "I hate what Ellis said. I'm going to see it anyway because I want to say Ellis, you're wrong," or whatever. It's like it's a good way to gauge things. So I, I'm I love that article. I just like the term "following Ellis's vibe." That sounds good to me. <laughs> it also proves, too, that studios can't hide films the way they used to. Like, you have to. Now, if you don't show your movie to critics or to fans ahead of time, it is such a red flag, more so than it used to be, where people just couldn't find a review. I wonder how this movie is. I can't, I don't seem to see anybody writing about it yet. Now people know that the reason why is because they don't want it to be on Rotten Tomatoes before the movie comes out. Right. I remember a few years ago, I was talking with a rep from one of the studios, uh, because at the time, this is about five years ago, when there was this mentality, ah, what critics say doesn't really matter. And this one person, this one studio told me, we know there's about a 10% swing. If a movie was, let's for argument's sake, if the movie was just on its own going to make 100 million, if the reviews are really good, we can count on making 110. If the reviews are really bad, it can drop down to 90 for about a $20 million swing. I don't think that number applies anymore. I think that number is much larger now because one Fox rep was talking about how, look, the tracking for Fantastic Four was $50 million opening weekend. It actually made less than half of that at 24. Hmm. And the one thing the Fox rep said is, had the Rotten Tomatoes reviews been great and the word of mouth had been good, we would have exceeded that projection number of $50 million. Instead, we got people losing their jobs over it. And so that is a reflection of the coming reality. And I welcome that reality where we're not just listening to the corporate machine anymore tell us what movies to see. We're actually listening to our 
you know, our, our friends, the people we know, the people we trust, the people we follow, all that kind of stuff. Those voices are now having an important part, and I think that is the start of something really good. If the studios can learn how to tap into that as well, I think that would be great. It's, it's a fun time to yeah. be a movie fan now because actually the fans do get to influence so much more about how a movie does, and that in turn factors into if a movie stays in theaters longer or if it gets a sequel. So you do have a lot of power now. Have some self-efficacy out there, movie watchers. <laughs>